If you're looking for Facebook marketing trends for 2021, you've found the right video. In this session, we're going to break down the hot topics and ideas for how to effectively market your e-commerce business or retail a brand on Facebook. So join us today. Kyle, you ready? I'm ready. I'm Kyle Hamer. This is Jason Miles, and we help e-commerce sellers scale. And we're excited to talk about Facebook trends. 2020 has been a, a crazy year for everybody, but it's also had a lot of changes even in social media. And if you haven't been paying attention, 2021 is shaping up to, to have some cool insights that you can begin to leverage uh, on your social media for Facebook specifically. So live selling which you're like, what is that? And that's a term that we've sort of developed with our coaching clients over the last, uh, I don't know, a few months, really, yeah. Yeah. as we've seen an, an increase in Facebook Live. And according to Social Bakers, Facebook Live usage has actually gone up quarter over quarter at, and as of uh, quarter two of 2020 just a few months ago, they saw an additional 26.8% increase, meaning yep. a lot of that even driven by brands. Brands as a whole are embracing using Facebook Live and that platform to connect with their audience, connect with their customers. And so as a seller, using that to actually sell products, almost like you, you'd mentioned it uh, QVC style. I think that's yeah. what inspired you on that. Yeah. And our coaching clients do an amazing job with their live selling efforts. And so people call it different things, but in essence, it's turning on a live session and just starting to sell your goods. And QVC was the original inspiration for many people, but now the technology has just made it easy. And there are tools and um, we did a deep dive podcast on this on the e-commerce leader recently. Um, and so it's something to check out. It's definitely a hot trend more and more uh, brand owners are getting comfortable doing it or have their, having their teams do it and learning the techniques and ideas related to effectively selling live uh, to your community. So yeah, it's a hot trend for 2021. It's not going to stop. Uh, it's only going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. The different types of posts on Facebook uh, okay. is it's really interesting to, to dive into. So if you look at some of the data, one thing that I had noticed and had seen and which I think was really cool are, are gifts or uh, mm -hmm. basically these moving images, right? There are still images that, that have some sort of movement to them. And uh, GIFs have been a staple on internet marketing for a long time. They've been used in display advertising forever. And it's because they have movement, so it captures people's attention. Yeah. What's really interesting about GIFs, though, on Facebook's platform is that they actually get sort of read as a video, meaning if you're familiar with Facebook and the custom audiences, or you can set up pixeled audiences to, to, to retarget people on for video, you can do that with a GIF. So if you have a GIF that's three, 15, 20 seconds, mm -hmm. um, people watch it, you can then retarget them with additional ads and sort of bucket them down based on that engagement with it. So mm -hmm. a really, really clever way to, to, to use GIFs on the platform. So not only do they have high engagement, but you can also retarget them and you can create them really, really quickly on like giphy.com or something like that. It doesn't have to be super complicated. Yeah, I love that. And I don't think I've ever heard people talking about pixeling people who are engaging with the GIFs uh, you know, that they, they share. That's a smart way to sort of sort your audiences and to think through how you could really segment uh, I love that. That's a great tip. Okay, I've got another one for you. Uh, User-generated content continues to be a hot topic. Um, it's not going away anytime soon. In 2021, it's going to be continued to be used effectively. Having user-generated content in support of your brand and having your customers or your tribe members, your community, go live and or do video uh, based um, messages or appeals, unboxing videos, those kinds of things Absolutely. is a fantastic um, Facebook trend. And it's going to continue. Mm -hmm. It gives you the opportunity to not only solicit and collect uh, user generated testimonial, you know, words, but you've got the video content as well that you can use on your website. So that's one that's going to continue as well. Um, Kyle, any thoughts on UGC? There are really big brands, $100 million brands that used UGC as their front in advertising. Oh, wow. And they have a really powerful feedback loop, meaning they ask their customers for UGC, either video or photo testimonials, and yeah. then they recycle that to the front end of their advertising. 
So instead of some brands are just leading with product images mm -hmm. or product videos, these bigger brands, really, really smart marketers are actually leveraging their user generated content on the front end to then pull people into the funnel to pixel them and wow. to start engaging with them. So it is, it is the, the on trend and that's what the smart marketers are doing. Interesting. So not just for testimonials, but for front end ads, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. What else you got? Oh, it, this is really, this is surprised me a little bit. Collages back in like, I would say like, 2000 collages were like the big thing you know some on pinterest mm -hmm. people were doing them on instagram you know they'd create almost like a on their feed they do like a little collage style uh, yeah. setup for that as well and i think they're they're sort of making a comeback you know it's funny everything sort of sees it everything's sort of cyclical online you know yeah. trends happen and it, it's really interesting how that occurs and it's just an interesting different way to get, grab people's attention so putting some of your product images together, putting some user generated content mm -hmm. images together, sort of a collage format that that's visually interesting. Mm -hmm. It's something to definitely test on your, on your organic social posts. Okay. I love that. Uh, another one that I'll share is um, text heavy Facebook ads. Now there used to be a re restriction or limitation on what amount of text could be on an image mm -hmm. on Facebook, you know, for advertising purposes. And they would, uh, uh, block the image or then they kind of throttled it um, but they're they've released that uh, the scrutiny on that now so you can have more text heavy images that you share in association with your advertising um, but the other tip here or the, the trend is just in the description uh, section of the post or in the in the written section of the post uh, people are doing much much longer form content mm -hmm. copywriting and uh, that is a trend that has started here in the last couple of years. It's going to continue. Yeah. And the idea is very straightforward. You can use that unlimited amount of text. I think it's unlimited. I mean, I've seen some very, very long, <laughs> some very long ones, <laughs> uh, Facebook posts to do incredibly compelling copywriting and to really create um, some smart uh, in engaging, uh, you know, word choices that, so there are a lot of resources offline and online to learn how to do long form copywriting. The one that is the old school thing that I always have gone to is the ad work ad week copywriters handbook. Joe Sugarman is famous, uh, for his infomercials and, uh, but his writing format is effective and it could be used on Facebook in the long form, uh, style posts. So, don't forget, you know, you Absolutely. can use the words on Facebook For and that's sure. definitely a hot trend. Uh, what else you got? Well, real quickly on that, one of the things that's interesting is that you're just deciding where you want to do the, the bulk of your selling. Because mm -hmm. if you have a long form sales copy on Facebook and they click through to it, you don't have to do as much selling on that landing page, on the product page that you're doing oh, because they've point. already done that and shown interest in it. Mm -hmm. So it's either if you go really short on your copy or using video or something quickly on Facebook or whatever, wherever advertising platform you're using them. That means your sales page or your product mm -hmm. page has to do more heavy lifting from the sales standpoint. So just keep yeah. that in mind on the just position between long form and short form and where that occurs. Facebook groups continue to still be a, a thing. And it's yeah. something that we've seen our clients work um, and use effectively. We're, we've used them effectively. Um, they're, they're still there and Facebook's still pushing into it. And there are more than 10 million groups on Facebook, I think, uh, according to Facebook in 2019. And so it's just a way to sort of aggregate, collate people together that have uh, very similar interests or they're passionate about same thing and be able to communicate with them effectively. Yeah, totally agree. And of course, those are easily monetized as well. You can have, you know, closed groups that are a part of a paid program. Uh, and that's not against the TOS. Um, and you can have free groups that can blow up in terms of just user uh, engagement. Another trend that <clears throat> I think is up and coming inside Facebook is the um, more meaningful use of hashtags. Uh, they've been technically usable for a long time in Facebook, but the, um, the trend now is that they're going to be expanding in terms of their meaningfulness inside of Facebook. Is that your understanding? That is. Yeah. It was something that came out, uh, just recently. I saw some an article in social media today and Facebook said that they want to increase the content and encourage more engagement through using hashtags for, for searchability. Okay. So yeah, it would be really, really interesting how that occurs, you know, pulling data from Instagram, obviously they're integrated Facebook and Instagram. And That's, so try to leverage it. It's an interesting pivot because what it really means is that they're trying to create Facebook content that has a more 
shelf life mm -hmm. than what most people perceive it to have, which is, you know, a day or two, or maybe, you know, if you've got something that's really super meaningful that you've spent money to advertise, you've got maybe 10 days or, uh, you know, two weeks that a content can have as a shelf life. But if you use hashtags, then you're going to have a more uh, back catalog vibe that mm -hmm. will begin to occur. That's an interesting change. I don't know if they can make that a reality or not, but if they want to try, you know, it's great for us because, you know, a lot of times as marketers, we have really good stuff, but man, it was just shared six months ago, but you're like, dang it. You know, what do you do? You re repost, exactly. recycle. And so hashtags might create a longer shelf life. Now we've seen videos, meteoric rise and across the board, no matter what mm -hmm. platform you're on, it still continues to trend heavily on Facebook. So from just an overall content planning perspective, have some level of video content in your plan, in your social media uh, profile of the content you're putting out there. It, it's really, really critical. So okay. um, yeah, it, it's, it's a big deal. It, can, it continues to be a bigger deal. So use video. And it continues to be short videos are better in essence. Yeah. For yeah. sure. The, the ideal okay. length, sort of, if you look at all these different social media metrics, uh, okay. between 65 seconds and five minutes perform yeah. the best overall okay. on Facebook. Yep. The last one I think we'll mention here today is Facebook shopping. And mm -hmm. Facebook shops, um, they're trying to push their way into, um, you know, e-commerce and transactional selling. Uh, you know, peer to peer selling. And I think they're going to continue to invest in that. I, I just have to believe that they see that as a long term use case for Facebook, yeah. that will help salvage the platform. So it's not just political post after political post mm -hmm. by uh, arm's length quasi friends that you don't really care about, you know, right. and, and you just don't even want to see that stuff. I think that they realize that um, merchandise and, and yeah. be, being a merchant marketplace yes. can really, really add long-term value. And I think they're going to continue to push into that. Is that kind of what you're I do. seeing? Yeah, here? I think so too. I, well, I mean, I've read some interesting articles uh, just within the last couple of weeks that, that really sort of made this case an argument that Facebook as an advertising platform has peaked. Like it's mm -hmm. reached sort of its yeah. maximum capacity for advertisers. So they have to, in fact, mm -hmm. find other avenues to create revenue because the only way Facebook makes money right now currently is on advertising. Mm -hmm. So that is really important to them, I think, for a long term viability as a platform. And, and they've made some strides to that. I mean, definitely, like you just mentioned, Facebook shops. But within that is a deeper integration with platforms like Shopify. Mm -hmm. You know, they're pushing in to sort of have that integration even tighter. And I think yeah. we'll see even more of that um, as, as well as a defense against, um, against Amazon. Because mm -hmm. what's also interesting from this on Amazon perspective is they're playing around with doing sort of what they call posts now mm -hmm. on, inside Amazon's app. So there's this social sharing component to mm -hmm. what Amazon's trying to do. So they see they're watching each other and they're, yeah. they're trying to sort of balance out the playing field. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, hopefully this list has been helpful to you for your marketing efforts and ideas for 2021 as it relates to Facebook. Kyle and I work um, through a logical framework with all of our coaching and consulting clients called the nine mountains of traffic and organic social is just one of those nine mountains and Facebook is just a subset of that. So if you want to really unlock your marketing strategies and ideas in a much, much deeper way, then you need to check out our nine mountains.com uh, resources. We've got an ebook for you and then video content as well. Love to have you check that out. And thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you.